Look at the framing. I feel like we're in a British documentary. Could be. So what do we have today? We're rebooting the show. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, and welcome to Apple Chat. Uh, as I said, it's been bumpy. We are rebooting this show. But it's one thing hasn't changed. I'm Tom. I'm Ryan. And this, this is, is Elliot, uh, the Aperture Cat. You may have seen him on, on my Facebook or on... Uh, well, he hasn't been on the Bucket Cast on Facebook yet. He'll get there. Oh, uh, good we, we have a new place. This is part of the reboot. Uh, we're not at the castle anymore. Uh, at the Pawtucket Armory. We, we've moved uh, closer to downtown Providence, closer to the action, to where all the happening things are in Rhode Island, the things happen in Rhode Island? No, they don't. Okay. Well, we're clo- if something it's were crime. to happen, we would be closer to it. Crime. <laughs> Who was yeah. crime in Pawtucket, too? <laughs> there really is. Really a lot less. <laughs> um, yeah. No, oh. it's nice. So we got we got a nice new place. Uh, we got a little bit different setup. As you can see, we, we, uh, we don't have the giant wooden three-thing backdrop holder that you would see in the background now. We've got a, a nice Actual. proper one. Oh, it's less proper than the big wooden one. It's just, it's easier to move around. It's a whole lot easier to work <laughs> with and move around. Um, so yeah, you can see the cat's here now. Uh, he was living in my apartment before. And uh, yeah, we got a pretty sweet new setup. Uh, so as part of the reboot, we are also, uh, we're calling this season two now, as you probably saw in the titles. Uh, I spent most of the summer making new titles and learning After Effects because I had nothing better to do while I was sick. Um, I couldn't leave the house, so mm. and I just said, I'm going to sit down and learn After Effects, so I made us new titles. So we're going to drop this to three days a week. Five days a week was killing us, and as you saw towards the end, uh, before we took our summer break, that we weren't even getting to five days a week anymore because it was just way too much content for us to, to be putting up every week and running the studio and having full-time jobs. So we're going to job. so we're, we're cut it back to three days a week. So we're going to compress it down a little bit. Our, our Mondays are going to be news and highlights and talking about what's going on in the world. Uh, although we'll always have a little bit of news every day because that's just what we do. Um, and then Wednesdays, we're going to try and get guests in here. That, that's my goal is to get a guest in here every week for Wednesdays. Um, we do have a couple already said they want to be here, so I'm excited. We just have to... Yeah schedule with them and get them in here and that doesn't include the cat no uh and then fridays we'll do our our gear reviews although we're going to talk about gear today because it's that's what the news is mm-hmm. today uh friday we'll be doing our gear reviews and expanding on the big board so yeah so, photokina so yes jumping into our news uh photokina just closed up photokina is a every other year event held in cologne germany uh, i always thought cologne was in france because it smells good but Apparently, it's in Germany. Mm. I, I'm bad at geography, apparently, in, in Western Europe. Most people are. So, uh, but every year, every other year, so every even numbered year in Cologne in the fall, they have Photokina. It is the like giant, super giant industry event. Um, so, there's all, like, every everybody who's even remotely related to cameras or optics in the world is there. Except for us, apparently, because we're too poor to go to Germany. Yeah, that's a lot. A lot of things get announced leading up to Photokina, and then some things get announced at Photokina. And those are like the really big announcements that get announced there. Although this year was a little backwards. The, the, really, the three really big announcements everyone was looking forward to came out within the week leading up to it. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought that was interesting. Um, so the big one that I am very excited about, but not as super excited about as I could be, is the Canon 7D Mark II which the rumors have been flying around for a year and a half now as to what it's going to be, and they've gone all over the place. The thing finally exists. Mm -hmm. It actually exists now. People have put it in their hands. They've shot with it. Uh, It was actually used at the World Cup. I love their display at Photokina. With the the dude with the soccer ball. The dude with the soccer ball, yeah. He's in a cage, basically. It was kind of weird. It it was a little weird. they, they They set up a booth, and it had, like, Goals on the sides, but they weren't goals. They were just like straight up yeah, and down. It's a soccer net. It was like a soccer netting, and then you were in front of him, and there was a wall behind him, 
and there was nowhere for him to go. Yeah, there's no way in and out other than like the hole you're shooting through. So it was yeah, it's like it, a little soccer guy like cage. Little, the, you know, he was like a little trapped German soccer player, and uh, they let you take the seven D Mark II, and they had a variety. They were like what six of them out, six yeah. or seven of them out, each one with a different lens on it. Uh, everything from the kit lens, which on the seventy is the twenty four one hundred five. L F four the one hundred four hundred the seventy two hundred the twenty four one hundred five I think they even because it is an APS C sensor mm. I think they even put the kit eighteen fifty five on one of them that comes with the the consumer grade cameras and just let people take pictures with it and uh, it does ten frames a second mm -hmm. I mean they they build this thing as a sports camera that that is why they had the soccer player in there it, it is it is very specifically a sports camera it's got very good low light. You know, super clean, high ISO, it's 10 frames a second. It's got dual digit six processors, which is how they're getting the 10 frames a second. Uh, so basically every other picture gets passed to one processor or the other, it goes back and forth so they can process twice as fast. Uh, which what I blow, blows my four and a half out. It's the APS-C, so you get the 1.4 crop factor magnification. So your 7200 is really a 98 to uh, 1 to 280. Yeah, something like that. So you basically get extra zoom out of it, which is great for sports because you're generally not right on top of people. And the autofocus points, it's 51 autofocus points. Mm -hmm. They literally go out to the edge of the frame. Yeah, that's it's a big improvement. That was the big improvement that came out of that. Nothing else has that yet, at least on the Canon side, that you can't focus on the edge of the frame. Now you can, and they're all cross-type. Hmm. All 51 of them are cross-type. That's... That's where they got it is, is Canon is notorious, I know personally from all the cameras I've owned. It's like, hey, we're gonna put one cross type in the center, you know, one of the super focus, and everything else is gonna be vertical or horizontal. And you're like, come on guys, you can do all cross type. Well, now they can, they have, they've mm -hmm. shown it. So. Yeah, that's a similar thing for the other big announcement is the D750. Uh, it's interesting upgrade mm -hmm. for the 700 line, which isn't, it's not really a 700 line like everyone's been whining about on the internet for some reason. I don't know what the obsession is with the D700. Like, I, I understand that it was a big camera for its time, but why is everyone looking for a direct? I never figured this out. Is How old is the D700? It was a 12 megapixel Pro, so it's five years old. Okay. But they're looking for a direct predecessor for a camera that doesn't have any, like, notable quality that's not already covered by the 610 and the 810. The D750 is a 24 megapixel full frame Nikon camera. Um, the major updates were they put the autofocus system of the D4S and the D810 in the 750. So it's a quick, very quick to focus. It's smaller, it's lighter than either the 610 or the 810. Yeah, it's almost like the SL1 in size, isn't it? It's not that not low. Not quite that it's small. It's not anywhere near that low. It's okay. still a full SLR, but it's got a good and noticeable. It's shallower and it's kind of I narrower I, in every dimension. I guess I couldn't get all the way down to the SL1 because it's a full no. frame. No, yeah. It's, it's pretty much as small as you can make a full frame SLR camera. Yeah. They added a bunch of things which make it seem like a very wedding oriented and a very action oriented camera. It has a, a tiltable screen which has a very robust metal backed tiltable screen which I guess feels very good when you do it. Actually play with the tiltable that, screen. That's what every, I've talked to a couple of people who've played with it. And they all say the same thing. They're like, if you're worried about that thing falling off, it's not. <laughs> it's just, it's do, not. Do, do, do. So the, yeah, the, D, the D750, um, 24 megapixel full frame sensor. Price wise, it's right in the center between the D610 and the D810, which puts it at, was it $2,800 or something? Yeah. Um, where the D810 is 33-ish and the 610 is 23-ish. It's real upgrade is the autofocus. That's what I, I took away is that the biggest the biggest upgrade for that camera is the autofocus. That's what it sounds like. So it's a, it's an improved sensor over the 610. Uh, it's improved autofocus. It's improved pretty much everything takes a little step up. A little better ISO performance. A little better metering. A little better white balance probably. The video is the updated 60 frames per second at 1080p. Better quality video. So it's it's a small 810 where the 610 is its own thing. The 750 is a smaller, very light camera, and then the 810 is the big beast of a camera. It's, I still think it's a little bit dense of a line for Nikon to take, with three cameras all within $1,000 of each other, basically. I think you're looking at, well, no, because I was going to say, I think you're looking at three different audiences, but you're really not. 
it's they're all cameras. I mean, they're they're marketed at three different audiences, but they're all pretty similar cameras at this point. The 810 is the top of the range. It does a lot of things very well. It's I mean, the way the way an 810 is built, it has no frills. It's very professional oriented. But the 610 and the 750 have a lot of the same modes and a lot of the same just controls are set up very very similarly but the 610 feels more like a pro a lower pro than the 750 does i don't know their marketing is a little strange between the 610 and the 750 yeah i I'm because not... it's not a direct replacement for the 610 that's that's a big big thing they keep saying it's not a replacement for the 610 it's a whole new line i don't know i just i don't I, quite get it i i think where they're going with, I, I think it is three different markets, and this is just my opinion, and I, I you know, would invite everyone out, out there to uh, give me your opinion on what you think about this, but uh, the 610, 600, 610, because you can still buy used 600s out there, is aimed at beginning professionals. I, I'm not even using the term semi-pro at that point because, you know, it's, it is a big investment. It's yeah, it is. Because now you could you could be a semi pro on a fifty two fifty three hundred now. Uh, yeah, the seven thousand series. The seven thousand series. So I'm, I'm saying you're, you're you're entry level professionals. So you're in the the you prosumer entry level pro. You you've got your six ten, and I think you're really advanced. You know, later in the career, not even later in the career, but like like further developed. You get your eight ten, especially where you need the higher megapixels. I think the 750, they're trying to hit the market of the DSLR videographers more. It's definitely marketed at videographers more. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely an action, built as an action camera and marketed to DSLR video much more. The strange thing is the 810 is $500 more expensive, right? Right. And it does video better. It's built better. It's a little heavier and bulkier, which only really matters for a couple of fields. So it's, I, I get that they pointed the marketing that it is smaller, it's all of the image quality of the 610 with a smaller body, but it's not, it's still a full frame camera. So it's, I'm a little bit weirded out by it. It's especially the floppy screen. Like the, the, That's definitely where I think they're going straight to videographers with this. But if you're gonna make a consumer into full frame entry level camera, so like the cheapest full frame camera as the 610, I'm surprised that the 750 is the one with the, the tilt screen. You know, it's, it seems like the 750 is an afterthought in their lineup. Like it's, it's the new one and they just kind of plunk it between. Well, it. I, I really think they are trying to cut out part of Canon's DSL videographer niche. They, 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 they're trying to cut into it. And the 750 gives them exactly that. The 750 gives them the, the 1080p 60 frames video. You've still got a what, 24 megapixel sensor in there for taking stills. You've got the articulated screen so you can do things like have a low or a hip shot and still be able to see it where you can't do that on the 610 or the 810. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you've got that extra angle, the ability to work or if you have it up high on a tripod you can have it bent down and look at it. So I think it gives you, I think they're trying to cut into that market and I wouldn't be surprised if you see some more cinema oriented Nikon lenses in the next couple of years. I, I don't know. I honestly don't, it's, it's very, it's very tenuous what their actual move is to that. Um, yeah, their cinema oriented stuff is, there's not really cinema oriented stuff in, uh, in their glass lineup, yeah. in their lens ecosystem. But, they do, I mean, they still succeed in making very good lenses. So it's... Oh, well, yeah. That's, it's weird. It's very weird. Yeah. It's like they have to start a whole new line of lenses, and that's not something I see Nikon doing anytime soon. But, well, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. And then, speaking of lenses, the other big thing that came out right before Photokina, and nobody really got their hands on, except for a couple people we know who got to be testers for it, uh, the Sigma 15600, which is available in both Nikon and Canon mounts, uh, but not Sony or Panasonic or Olympus or anything else. So they, they hit the two big ones to bring it out at Photokina. It is a beast of a lens. I mean, it is, seriously, it's huge. It's, it's big. Uh, 
and then it, it like it zooms out and then you put the lens hood on it and it, it's huge it's great um it looks like an amazing sports lens and again this, this comes back to sports they're marketing it specifically in their sports line mm. is technically a 15 150 600 f5063 Sport. No, it's five zero. All right. Yeah, it's five zero six three. Um, and they're they're advertising. They're putting it out there specifically as a sport. It's two K, you know, two thousand bucks. But if you are serious on sports photography, or and it would work great for wildlife. It would work great for, I don't know what else. Anything else you use a telephoto for? Yeah, it's it's wildlife or sports really. It's it's, yeah. it's an extreme telephoto distance. Yeah, I mean, it's six hundred. You're you're shooting the guy at the other end of the football field. But they're, they're marketing this one. They, they did say there's going to be, with their three lines, sport, art, and contemporary. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a contemporary version. It's going to be a little more. It's going to open up a little further. Instead of being a 5063, I think it's going to be a 4556. Five, 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 yeah, they usually do 4556. Five, yeah, it's going to be a 4556. Five, it's going to be bigger. It's going to be heavier. I mean, it's already a fairly hefty lens, but not so much. I mean, when you're used to carrying around the, the 600s, for shooting, you know, the big 600s for shooting sports, it's going to be light. Yeah, it's nothing that. compared to a 600 millimeter prime, but yeah, it's it's still a beefy lens. It's it's, it's beefy. It is both. And this is the one thing I liked when I when I've seen the demos of it. It is both a turn zoom and a push pull zoom. They both work. Yeah. Well, usually it's one or the other. Hmm. And it's actually you could do both, and it it, it the locking thing was important. the locking thing is important. You can lock it in at all of the marks, so it's basically. The 150, 200, 250, 300, 400, 500, 600. You can lock it in because it, it's not even lens creep. Yeah, it it's just, just lens fall. Yeah, it just flops out of like it. Just, it's, the front end is so heavy on it that the thing... So, if you want to get to 600 real quick, just take it out of your bag upside down. It'll be 600 when you pull it out. Oh, yeah. It's, it's an interesting optical design. It's, it's very unique for a lens like that to be holding up optically. It's, I mean, it's obviously not the best, but it's, it's holding up optically at that range, which is very impressive. And for the price point, it, it's amazing. Because mm. that price point will get you, what, a 7200? No, I mean, it gets you... In, in, in the first, first parties? Yeah, it gets you a 7200 2.8, or it gets you... 100, 400 F4. Yeah. But you're still not out to 600 yet. We get a 7200 F4 on a teleconverter. Yeah. Um, which would drop you to five six anyway. Yeah, that's I mean a seventy two hundred f four with a two x teleconverter is about the same price. Probably not quite as good optically, so it's yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean when you when you start looking at the options, it's a good option to have. It's it's a strange market though. The extreme telephoto market is a weird target for me. I just you like nature. I like nature, but the people who are going to spend $2,000 on a lens, I mean, it's out there. The people, there are people who shoot wildlife photography and don't want to spend $10,000 on a lens. I like to see it there. It's better than teleconverting a lens. Like, I've, I've teleconverted my 70 to 200 with a 2X teleconverter, which is good. It's decent. It's probably roughly the same. So if you put a 70 to 200 2.8, which is very good optically, and you teleconvert it, it probably ends up roughly the same sharpness as... 150 to 600 is at the similar focal ranges, but it's awkward. You know, it's awkward and it's it's not ideal. You know. Well, I got something for you. I have already placed the order to rent the 150 600. Cool. From Borrow Lenses, and over the summer I talked to them. They agreed that we could be Borrow Lens partners. Fun. Which is cool because as long as we mention them in our podcast and then we we review gear that they ship us and. They actually help promote us, which I think is kind of cool. Sweet. So I was like, that that's pretty cool. And it's not like I got a form letter back. Like, I got a real nice letter back from the hmm. director of marketing. If it's the form letter, it's the nicest freaking form letter I've ever seen. Yeah, Borrow Lens is not big enough to, no, they're, like, they're very, they're yeah. very good. And they're awesome. I mean, I, I go in their store and just pick stuff up and, like, yeah. not, not even call ahead, and they don't even care. No, yeah, it's in it's... stock and not reserved. <laughs> they basically just fill out the order for you right there. Wish it was a little bit closer than it is. It's it's a haul up there. From here, yeah. But you think about most of the people in the country who would use them have to have it shipped to them. Yeah. That's not as fun, but it's still it's quite a drive out there. Yeah. I, I remember picking mine up. It was uh, quite a detour to get up there. But it's still it was worth it. Yeah. So. It's it's nice it's nice having that opportunity with the bar lenses. Yeah. 
So I'm looking forward to working with them. I've, I've got the 15600. Uh, they should be shipping it out Monday or Tuesday. I don't remember which day I told them to ship it now uh, to be here so we can have it here to review for Friday. Um, I also talked to Matt Norris, and he was like, oh, I want to play with that. So we might see Matt Norris. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I got it for Matt Norris on the side of the yeah, – with okay. a little bit of free time. Yeah. Uh, so I got it for five days. It was like 60 bucks. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it's for not a terrible. brand new lens, I mean, I might be the first person shooting on it. You never know. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. There were, there were some there there were some cool bags and things at at, at Photokina and uh, basically if if there was somebody making something they were there. I would I would have put money the, on the, the bag I want is the low pro friggin' tactical backpack. Oh yeah, that thing's awesome. They took my backpack and I just added one inch nylon so gear webbing across the entire bag. You can strap on whatever you'd like to. So all right. Yeah, that's a big. That's a lot of the Photokina stuff. Oh well, yeah, and that's their big time to announce things. So you get in and get into the vendor, uh, the vendor, the manufacturer websites, and mm -hmm. see all the cool new stuff they've got out. Um, all right. So anything yeah, else from that, Photokina? That's Photokina. I mean, no? nothing, nothing big. All right. So what'd you do over the summer break besides shoot weddings? Not much. You just shoot a lot of weddings. Pretty much. We went to the Big E once. Did that. Uh, took a bunch of pictures because I don't really do anything else. Well, yeah, I mean, you're a photographer. Went to Vermont, took pictures. Um, Did you make up New Hampshire this summer? Up to uh, Valley Cop? Yeah, I think we did for like a day. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we didn't actually That's spend, a long day. Uh, it was a long day. I didn't. We didn't. I didn't spend any length of time in New Hampshire. All right, I didn't get up there this year. I mean, I got up to to Stockbridge to go do the festival, but that was before we took the break. And that was. Yeah, I was. I was up in. Uh, Jamaica, Vermont for a little while. That's Didn't cool. really do a ton of stuff. Now, nope. waiting for the fall. There's a couple of oh. things I want to do in the fall, which is now. Yeah. There's a couple of things I need to be doing now. So, yeah, the fall is here. Yeah, I have a friend who, she's coming out from high school who lives in Colorado, and she's like, I'm coming out to see leaves with my fiance. I'm like, that's cool. So she keeps asking me, like, every week, she's like, you have to give me updates. What do the leaves look like? I'm like, it's well, I'm in Rhode Island, and you're going to Vermont. So it's like a week difference. It's actually not that different. Yeah, I'm like, um, so it's going to be a little different, but this is yeah. what I'm seeing. <laughs> Up in Vermont, it's like the 10th, October 11th, 10th. It's like the peak, so two weeks in either direction. Um, I have an engagement scheduled for the 15th down here, which is like the Yankee Candle peak day. <laughs> it's like <laughs> we chose the engagement day based on that, basically. It's better be nice. Oh, yeah. All right. Lots of pictures. Yeah. I got sick. Nah. That wasn't fun. I learned After Effects, though. Mm. They wouldn't let me go to work. You'll see kind of cool new stuff in Season 2 in the video because I spent a lot of time just screwing around with it. That was, uh, that, that was, that was my highlight. Uh, I got to go shoot a game at Fenway, not as a press, but just we just happened to have really good seats. Oh! That's the last thing I was upset about. The announcement that never came because it's not coming for a while yet. There's not going to be an 85 millimeter arc anytime soon. Oh yeah, Sigma. I mean Zeiss just made one. Yeah, Zeiss made like, their. Oh god, Zeiss. Zeiss. I don't know. I don't know who buys Zeiss lenses, but they must sell them because they're still around. I mean, I know Sony buys them for like everything else, but like the actual Zeiss Otis lenses, I don't know who buys them. They don't but, need to sell that many of them, but. But um, Sigma. Decided, uh, I don't know if they decided. They, they announced the 35 and the 24. It'll probably be another two years. It'll probably be two years because they, they, the new 85 only came out a year ago. And the Zeiss just came out. And the Zeiss like, just came out, so. This thing, they're not trying to beat. Yeah, you don't want to compete with Zeiss. There's not really a competition in the, the main two either. It's like they're not, what are they trying to beat at a Canon Nikon? There's not a market for an 85 Prime that's, that's established. Just, yeah, it's just crazy portrait photog yeah. photographers. I just like the 85 focal length, yeah. and to get it at, I mean, the Sigma will be 1.4. I'll probably end up buying the Sigma 85 1.4 in January or February after I have some money put aside for it. I'd love to get the Canon 1.2. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, the Canon 1.2 would be awesome. All the bokeh. But, and I think I've talked about that before, but, but since there isn't a, uh, a Sigma 85 art coming out right now, the... Uh, Oh, hi, Elliot. You're back. 
and you're gone. Um, I'll just have to wait for a while. Yeah. So, that, that was my one sad moment. I was like, oh. Eh. And I, I, and, and, and I, this is my call out to Canon. 6D Mark II better be better than the 750 from Nikon or I'm switching teams. I'm telling you that right now. I will buy a 750 before I'll buy another Canon camera right now. The problem is that by the time they make a 6D Mark II, it's going to be a 620. So? Which is going to be better. It's going to be everything that a 750 is, but with a better sensor. All right. I think okay. that's the stuff. I think that's everything we got this week. So, you got anything you want to plug? Of course you do. You have lots of things you want to plug. I am at Peace Point Photography, www.peacepointphoto.com, and that's wedding stuff. All right. I need weddings. You do, I'm very you do good. need weddings. He is actually really, really good. So, uh, hire him. Mm -hmm. Plus, I need him to pay rent. Mm -hmm. We it's need only... stuff. It's like the rent is the, like, it could actually buy things that we need anyway. I need him to help pay rent, mm -hmm. which he can only do if he has weddings. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can find me at Aperture to Pixels Photography, which is ApertureToPixels.com, or you can find me on Facebook, uh, on Twitter at A2P Photo. And oh, oh, this is I'm going to plug this because it's the, this is the start of my 52 weeks of creativity project. I had a group of creative people who I'm starting to question my friends now after seeing. The I list didn't they get gave a chance me. to do it. So. Oh, there's still some empty slots you can oh, go good. fill in. Um, I'm just going to put like 80 things down. It's pretty funny. Oh, I, I asked a group of people to fill in a Google Docs spreadsheet for me with 52 different things that I should use as concepts for pictures. Uh, they have dates that start next Saturday and go through the whole year. Uh, I'm going to make all 52 of them happen one way or another, one week at a time. And you'll be able to follow the progress of that at A2P-Photo on Tumblr. Uh, that's going to be a Tumblr exclusive from the studio until it's done. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to link to Tumblr constantly. Uh, that, but that, that, that'll be what the Tumblr is used for. I've never used my Tumblr account for anything, so I'll use it for this. And if it doesn't come out like absolute crap, maybe I'll make a photo book out of it at the end of the year. Cool. Cool. If you give me any more t titles that are just colors... I'm, I'm gonna. I would never just do a title that's a color. Yeah, see, I have like Unless, every color. Oh, okay, no, I, I actually could do one. Yeah, but. see, I've got like every color of the spectrum now. That's so dumb. Yeah, I know. Actually, you know what the first week is? Blue. That's just dumb. Yes. Can I edit like some of them? <laughs> it, is, it is an open Google Doc. You can't <laughs> no, edit no, them. No, I'll, I'll, I'll I, I did fix some of them that were just absolutely impossible or dumb. I, I took them out. Or, like, I think I put three in as seeds. Because one of them actually posts on March 14th, and that's Pi Day. So it was Pi. Then people tried to change it to St. Patrick's Day, and I was like, screw you, it's Pi Day. You can use the next week for St. Patrick's Day. So that ended up being St. Patrick's After Party. <laughs> That'll be a fun one to try and shoot. Let me see when I find a, someone to dress up like a leprechaun and lay down in a pool of rainbow. I don't know, I'll come up with something. We basically did that. Yeah, but I have to do it again. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, so that's my plug. Uh, you can find our blog, which I've been updating, and I need to get Ryan to, to the information you know so he can exists. update it. Yay. Um, and that is at aperturechat.com. You can check out our blog. Uh, obviously, you already know how to find us on YouTube if you're watching this. And we are on Facebook at Bucket Castle Photo. Um, or us is always or important too. Us as people. We're people too. Sort of. Sort of. Facebook thinks we're people at least. Yeah. Marketable so. commodity. Yeah. All right. So we'll see you next time. <laughs>